How are you doing? Um, I'm all right. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, what have you been up to since we last met? Uh, trying to grow a beard, <laughs> but not doing as well as you. I can't remember when I last saw you. Where, was it at Salador? We We met. Um, I, I, I wasn't going to mention it, but we did meet in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> the one that Oscar Wilde used I like to, to bring the ice. Yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. We That's did. right. Which is now, um, is it still going? I haven't been there It's before. still there. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Brilliant. And Paul's involved still. Yes, hello, Paul, Paul and Gordon. Uh, hello, uh, Paul and Gordon um, from Celador. Yeah, they um, they are still running it. Are you yeah. still performing there? No, I haven't performed there for probably about five or six years. Mm-hmm. I think now. Mm. Yeah. That was a good gig, though. That was nice. It was really interesting because I uh, I used to sing uh, usually on Friday nights there, so it was quite a busy night. Yep. A small place, obviously it used to be yep. a toilet. Yep. And you're very very close to the audience, and it's it gets rowdy on a Friday night, and yet. Uh, so you've got to choose crowd-pleasing songs, yes. and uh, really, this is my new ballad. You don't really get to do <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was a great stomping ground, actually. I learned a tremendous amount, it, but yeah. it also nearly killed me and my voice. Yeah. I have to say, okay, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Right. Um, and I uh, and I found myself sort of disappearing after ten months of doing that every Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and retreating from performing for. Uh, I mean, it, that's not. The, entire reason why I retreated sure. from performing but yeah. it certainly was a factor just because it was enormously full on and yes. you know you having to stand on the table to get people's attention and yes it was one of the first times I realized really realized how um the job is to be a facilitator for other people's often the job is to be a mm. facilitator for other people's fun and mm. other people's night out and it's not about you no 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 Unless you are some enormous star, yes. like Barbara Streisand or something yes. like that, it's seldom about you. Yes, and that's a big learning for a yes. performer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm still learning myself. Actually. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's really ego. I don't, I don't say I, I am pleased about this. I'm not necessarily yeah. pleased about this. <laughs> that's it. Um, so, have you tailored? I'm going off piece now. I've got a whole list of questions. And it's gone. Right? It's, it's, it's gone. Yeah. 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 Fine. <laughs> so. Um, do you tailor your your act? Do you tailor your mood or approach to the venue and to the audience? Yeah, yeah. It's exactly what cabaret is good for, right. I think. Yeah. I was talking to um, some TV people, people the other day, and uh, I was telling them about my friend Kirsty. And mm. uh, Kirsty, if Kirsty uh, sees this, I tell people this story all the time, and I'm not going to say her surname for reasons which will become clear. When I met Kirsty, she had been in The Lion King, next to Cedador, right. um, yep. for nine years. It was so close. Yeah, yeah, so close to the big stage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she'd been in The Lion King for nine years, and she'd done the same part for nine years, yep. eight shows a week. Mm. And she was a, f- a flatmate of a friend of mine, and I met her at her home, and she was always stoned whenever I went round there. And I was like, <laughs> how does she go to work when she's always stoned? And then I found out how long she'd been doing the job for and mm. I thought God, you'd have to be stoned wouldn't you to do the same thing <laughs> yep. every n- yep. night for nine mm. years mm. and the thing about cabaret which I love mm. is it does afford you to pick up the script mm. and throw it mm. in the air mm. so if something's happened in the news that morning or something's happened to you that mm. week or, or something's happening in the room that very moment yeah you can turn to your pianist and go let's do a different number or Talk yeah. about something at all. Oh, there's a siren. Oh yeah, yeah. You you, res- you see, when we were little kids and we and we went to like dance or drama club and we did a recital. If a siren had gone off, our teacher would say to us, "And if something like that happens, just keep going. Yeah, just ignore it. Yeah, you know, ignore. like the hat yeah. or the cane fall on the floor. Just yeah. ignore it. Keep going. Yeah, completely the opposite with cabaret. Right, you deal with it. You right, 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 right. You deal with yeah. the drop of the the tray of glasses that's dropped yep. or the phone going off or yep. the heckle or whatever it right. is. Right, right, right. That's, that's what I love about it. Fantastic. Yeah. So you work you you're you're using the environment, using the stage, using props, or you're they're using gifts, it. You see. Right, most, right. most people think that they are um their problems and, and that us people are scared of them. Yes. And they think they're they think it's like a game of dodgeball and and, and the job is to sort of carry yep. on regardless. Yep. But it is to carry on regardless, but it's not to dodge them. Yes. It's to go straight at them and go, yes. and if someone yes. answers their phone, you go up to them and you yes. take them and go, hello, <laughs> you know you're on stage right now. You know. 
Fantastic. I I um I, I used to have a uh, I run run a big run a big band for um, four or five years. This is the advert, people. Uh, <laughs> it's all about me, actually. What's uh, it called, the big band? Uh, Jimmy Cannon Big Band. And the uh, website? Uh, uh, JimmyCannon.com. I'm not doing the big band. <laughs> years ago, years ago, years ago. So we used to do the Bulls Head in Barns, and yeah. uh, I had a, my phone rang. I left my phone on, which is which is on stage. At, on stage, which is we you know eighteen people in the band, seven people in the audience, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> I, I, I said, hello, I thought it'd be funny, you know, we, we stopped the number, hello, who is this? And they said, jazz. I said, sorry? Yeah, it's jazz. <laughs> and I said, well, absolutely, you're absolutely right, it is, we are, we're playing jazz. And it just happened to be a daughter of a friend of mine, it's called jazz. And she, <laughs> jazz was, she was looking for a dad, you know. Jazz phone. We want our genre that's, back. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. We're going to ask you to stop. Yeah, yeah, if you don't mind, please. We are the jazz police. It's just not swinging. My friend was in this play once uh, at the Broccoli Jack, and uh, he was to be on stage. He was to die in this scene, and then lie there for like the rest of the play for like half an hour. And uh, he'd forgotten the prop that was his bag. So we borrowed my friend Gavin's bag. My friend Gavin was also in the play. And, um, my, and he was like, yeah, take my bag. So he goes on stage, he does his scene, he dies, he's lying on the floor. And Gavin's phone <laughs> is in the bag. <laughs> no, no, on the, in the play. I'm just thinking my phone. Yeah. My, and I'll put it on there, that's all right. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, do they, that, I, I, think, I suppose this comes to, to one main question that I... So as you know, I'm, I've been working with, with people to help... Uh, you know, find their confidence in, in delivering their, their, their message. This is my, uh, my tagline. Um, <laughs> delivering their message. Delivering their message with more confidence. So there's people that are f for, for speaking. Yeah. So you know me as a singer, but yeah. I, so I, I, you know, I've, I've been working with people um, uh, to just to find if, you know, a lot of people have to, you know, all the time have to give, you know, speeches in, you know, meetings, presentations, mm -hmm. pitches, etc. So most people are worried about things that are not going to happen actually for you we were saying with with cabaret it's, it's sort of the opposite in a way yeah. you you want as you said there they these things are a gift and i suppose if, if i'm just thinking off the top of my head um as now that we have there's no script that you know actually if if you were to if if you know if if someone who needed to give a speech at a conference or etc they were worried about these things happening, you know, like the mic falling off or, you know, their trousers falling. I guess not, obviously, there's, there's ridiculous things that would happen that wouldn't yeah. happen. But um, would you suggest a way of coping, a coping mechanism to get around these worries, these concerns would be actually, you know, what's the worst going to happen? What's the worst going to happen? Mm. If, if something really, really bad happens, you know, obviously you have to stop it. But there are things that can, can, can you know, attribute to the you know, the variety and the diversity of, of, of the speech can be can make it really interesting and, and humorous as, yeah. well, as well. So I think that the most important thing is to acknowledge where you are and yes. what's going on. Yes, yes, yes. The here and now yep, of yep. the situation. Yep. So let's say, for example, that you're at a presentation and somebody else has just spoken or mm. it's been a whole morning of speakers. Mm. You could spend the time up until when you're on outside pacing up and down, mm. getting nervous, practicing the speech. Mm. I would suggest that being in the room, understanding the vibe of what's going on, mm. uh, whether people before you have been witty, what those people have said, mm. you know, what the message seems to be, the overall mm. message of the morning seems to be, how people's mood is yeah. in the audience, or whether yeah. it's just really bad wallpaper mm. that they're all having to deal mm. with that morning. Mm. Whatever it is, mm. there's something that's gone on. Yeah. And put it into your presentation. Yeah. Refer to something that somebody else has said. Yes. Refer to the fact that this is the ugliest boardroom that you know we've ever done a presentation mm. in, or that the coffee's terrible. And there's something that everyone in the room can... Because our job is to be uh, an alchemist, mm. I think. Mm. My job is to. Mm. Um, and if I can create an alchemy between me and everybody else in the room, yep. then we're on to something. Mm. 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 And you have to, the first thing you have to do is to find a common ground. Yes. You know? Yes. So sometimes on my phone, I've got this, uh, uh, this notes on my um, mm. phone. And mm. one of the list of notes is, jokes and joke ideas right and sometimes at events whilst another act is on stage i i, I scroll through and i panic uh, you know desperately trying to find what would be the right thing to say next mm -hmm. whenever i'm doing that instead of 
absorbing what's happening right now on stage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If I do the latter, if I absorb what's happening on stage, there will always be something to say. Right. It's a risk though, isn't it? But yes. you, you, yeah, but that's that's part of it. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, yeah. But the um payoff mm. for being that brave mm. Mm. is always better than this is what I know works because mm. I did it last time or I did it last year or I did it last mm. month or it works with this sort of audience. Mm. Don't do your audience a disservice of mm. thinking that they're any kind of audience. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You don't know these people and no, you don't no. know their lives and you don't know what's happened to yeah. them this morning. Don't think mm. you do. Mm. Even if you've been doing this for 30 mm. years like I have, mm. you know? Mm. Get in the room. Mm. <laughs> what, absolutely, what, what, um, what excites you about doing what you do? You're, you're... Very little. What, <laughs> 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 well, do you, you know, I mean, okay, do you, do you have to, do you, do you, do you, would, would you say, I mean, you, you talk about, um, when you're, in your teaching and your, sh- your shows, etc. you talk about putting a, um, well, you talk about the fourth wall, and yeah. you talk about your persona. Yeah. You talk about, I think you use another phrase, actually. I can't remember what that, that's called. but um, The golden thread. Yes, yeah. the golden thread. So tell us about the golden thread. Well, the golden thread is... Um, Connection. It, it's what's linking me and you right. to each other right now. Right. And, and, what, and, and what that is, yes. as you know, yes. is everything that's yes, yes, happening yes. between this man right. and yes, yes. this man. I, Everything right now. Yes, yes. Facial expressions, whether we're looking at each other, yes, the yes. way you're sitting, the way I'm yes. sitting, how long we've known each yes, other, yeah. how long it's been since we saw each other last, yes, you know, yes. whether I find you attractive or not, yes. our differences Do you in find age. attractive? Yes, I always, <laughs> always have. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. It, 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 so the golden My thread is, by the way. <laughs> the golden thread is everything. Yes. Basically, yeah. but 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 trying to unpick it mm. uh, and uh, and acknowledge the importance of it and yeah. and to keep it taught. Yes, to keep it yes. taught and to keep it uh, and, and to not let it snap. No, no, no. So there's this place between this flabby mm. bit of string yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this broken yeah. uh, because it's got so intense and so yes. uh, that and yes. that's what you're you're trying. That's what we're trying to. It's find. interesting. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Do you uh, do you, how do you deal with uh, how do you deal with negativity? How do you deal with negativity on stage and off stage? I mean, do do you how do you deal with how do you deal with negative? So it could be, um, you know, somebody drunk in the audience, someone heckling. You know, and it, it's quite common. There's, I mean, there's sort of um, there's videos now of, of uh, people. I've noticed that comedians quite they they put a lot of videos of being heckled and how yeah. they deal with it, and that yeah. seems to be their main kind of promo to their yeah. whole act yeah you know uh you, you don't do that too but you don't focus on that particular audience. no but when i started running training courses and i asked when i, I when i started running beyond compare which yeah. is about comparing but yeah. it's also um weirdly and completely yeah. coincidentally mm. businessmen mm. vicars oh really board okay. people who have to uh, you know make speeches yes. in, in front of boardrooms you know yeah. are, are turning up Yes. Not because they want to turn into a host or a compare, but because yes. they want to know how to speak with more confidence or, right. or, or authority. Fascinating. So that, that's why yeah. it's called Beyond Compare. Yes, yes, yes. yes, um, yes. The, what everybody wanted to know was how to deal with heckling. Wow. Yeah, because I wrote to everyone in advance on yeah. the first one I ran and said, I don't know what I'm doing, making this up, so please tell me yeah. what you want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because the yeah. imposter yeah. syndrome is he- massive yes. right now. Yeah, and they said, you. Yeah, they said they, uh, to a man, they all said they want to know how to deal with heckles. And I said, oh, yeah. crap. I don't yeah. know what I don't know how to answer that after yes. 30 years I don't really know how to answer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I found myself wandering around toy shops <laughs> I did. just kept wandering into shops and picking up balls and I, I honestly I have no idea I was just sort of pondering on how am I going to deal with this and I kept buying like all different sizes and colours and ones that lit up and, uh, and they all had different um, uh, Oh, what is it? When you throw a ball and it hits something, that would uh, um, they have different impact. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I just ended up sort of buying thirty balls and putting them in a bag and bringing yeah. them along and said, "Right, everybody, pick a ball." And yeah. we all just started throwing them around and exploring the impact of this ball on That's that fantastic. wall. I love that. Yeah. Or, and then that we yeah. swapped and we found we, we decided whether we liked our ball and then I made you just throw them at each other at all. No, we weren't allowed to throw them at each other, yeah. just wall yeah. and ceiling and stuff. Yeah. And just to find the different tensions yes, that yes. they created. Yeah. Um I don't 
I think heckling's got quite a bad reputation. Yes. And I think people think it's a negative thing. And I think people think that heckling is someone trying to spoil your performance, spoil your night, or better you. Mm. That's what I believe most people think of when we hear the word heckling. Mm. But my contention is that 95% of heckles Mm. are love. Mm. Their love. Mm. Um, there are a small amount of people who are who are trying to do all those things I just said, ruin yeah. the night, sure, sure, or or be cleverer than. Mm. Mm. I think the other people have just got rather overexcited. Mm. Like if you're like a ch- well, you've got little kids, mm. so you've been at children's parties with lots yep. of sugar involved. Yes, yeah, sure. It's like you can't give a bunch of people lots of sugar mm. and then be surprised mm. when they want to run around like maniacs and yes. make a noise. Yes. And that's what audiences are like. Yes. They're like a group of little kids at a five-year-old's mm. party. Mm. Yeah. So along with the jelly and the sweets and the Fanta come a few glasses being smashed and, you know, rubbish and mess and, and screaming and shouting. Yeah. So I kind of think of heckling as like a good thing. Mm. If they're that invested... Mm. You must. If they're not outside having a fag, then you're doing something right. They want to be involved. They, you, you've got them so excited yeah. when there is no fourth wall. Mm. You've got and you've got them so excited mm. that they want to say something mm. out mm. loud. Mm. You've got to be doing something right now. Your mm. job is to then hit it back. Mm. Yeah. Then you become Andy Murray, and the yes. analogy changes. I'm yes. sorry. There's so many I love analogies. It. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and then you keep playing yeah. until you've won the point. Things the same. Yes. And that's what. Stand yes. ups are great. Yes, at. yes, yes. And of course, they want to show all over YouTube. <laughs> They're good. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And why so, not? It is a skill. Not yeah. everyone can do it. And it's, 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 it's rare that you're going to get that one person that's completely ruins the evening. It's normally somebody just has a few comments. They want to be, they want to be loved. They want to, to, to give love. A bit of attention. A bit of attention. Yeah. Like kids. Yeah. You know. And the, the only, the, 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 I've been lucky, and, and you know, because um, many I'm a jazz singer, and they, my audience is mainly very serious and. Um, dead and dead yeah. half of them, half, or dying or dying yes <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, jazz is really uh, take, take, take music seriously and jazz seriously don't they yeah jazz I know is, yeah, yeah. No, no, you, there's, um, um, there's 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 a lot of people that go go along with with recorders they go along and record the gig and they don't watch the gig they, they just sit there reading a book with with we're going yeah with, with do they ask permission no how do you feel about that? I, <coughs> I think the reality is that they're just going to go home and, and to listen to it, you know, in private. I, they're, because they're at a certain time of their life, I, I, they're not going to, you know, I mean, I mean crikey, if, if they were, if I, you know, if I could, you know, get something from, you know, if they were to be able to sell thousands of records, then... So you could monetize you know, this situation. Well, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, this is the thing, you know. But we have changed, you know, uh, you and I are both, both old enough to, to have seen the sea change between, sorry, I'm now interviewing you. No, no, okay? no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, The sea change between. I knew this would happen. You know. Uh, <laughs> when we both started performing, yep. people didn't have smartphones. They didn't no. exist. And yep. asking someone, asking uh, if so, you could take someone's photo or bring a recording mm. along to a gig yep. was a completely yes. different situation to, yes. to what it is now. You, you, people are. are boldly just filming you aren't they just you know I can imagine yeah you know with, with your shows you know you, you I would imagine there's because you do a lot of gigs in the centre of London yeah there's lots of tourists and, and it's a it's a, a novelty well, sometimes you, know? you do an entire gig um it's one place they do in Knightsbridge and the gig is uh, about an hour and a half long me and some burlesque dancers so mm. I'm on stage quite a lot it's a, mm. sort of me heavy for, for everyone's mm. uh, delight um and uh, it's a really small little basement it's maybe 60 people sometimes the entire room will just have their phone up in front of their face. How do you feel? Like Talk about no fourth fucking wall. I mean, yeah. I've just spent the evening breaking it down, and you yeah. put one. Yeah, up. that's right. It's a fifth wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it it's crazy, isn't it? I hate it. Is how I right, feel about right, it. Right, right, right. Fine. I hate it because yeah. because it's not the experience. And what about people? You know, I I've decided personally not to do or try not to do any, and I'm still open for gigs, obviously. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Try not to do. You know, two things I'm trying not to do. One.